Hi. Good day to all. Uh, back again with the another video. And this time I have taken a slightly different topic, which is uh, normally not something which I use to take regularly. But this is just to give you an idea or kindle your interest in maritime law. So the topic which I have chosen is gender leverage. So it's just an introduction to gender leverage. We are not going to go deep into the uh, uh, regulatory, I mean uh, the insurance part of it. It's just to give you an idea about gender leverage. So that is the whole uh, idea of this video. I, I hope it uh, kindles enough interest for you to go through this. Uh, there is enough material available on the net to to uh, increase your knowledge about this particular topic and in general about maritime law. So that is the whole purpose of this video. Right. <clears throat> now, first to understand what is gender leverage, we just need to first see what is particular average. So uh, you can say that to give you a negative definition, what is not particular average is gender average. So to uh, go by that aspect, so let's first see what is particular average. Particular average or particular loss or damage borne by the owner of the property. That means if uh, you incur some damage or loss you bear the loss. Now, this is what is particular average. It cannot be transferred to other parties involved. Uh, meaning that this, this loss cannot be shared with anybody else. You have to bear the loss. As per marine insurance, what, what is particular average is? It is given as partial loss of the subject matter in short, caused by a peril against and which is not a general average loss. This is where you see this, the word general average comes, whereby partial loss of the subject matter insured caused by a peril against and which is not a general average loss. This is what is in marine insurance terms defined as particular average. Examples, damage to hull due to a storm, rough weather damage, uh, which you have to bear it. Cargo damage due to perils insured against. Hull damage due to running aground. Now, these are some of the examples of particular average. So, just remember these uh, examples because we are going to see a similar thing when it comes to general average, what, what kind of losses are covered under general average. Now, General average means sharing of losses incurred due to sacrifice done. And when you see this word sacrifice, you need to re remember one important thing that it has to be done intentionally. Sacrifice means it is done intentionally, which benefited all stakeholder, uh, stakeholders in a C venture. So once again, sharing of losses incurred due to sacrifice done which benefited all stakeholders in a sea venture. <clears throat> in simple uh, basic things if you want to take, uh, when we talk about the sea venture, who are the parties involved? The ship owner, the cargo owner and the charter who can be taken as a separate entity probably because he owns the bunkers. So he can, he is also a stakeholder in that uh, sea venture. Now, so when they all together share a sacrifice or loss incurred by some, that is general average. It's, it, it's not as simple. We'll see, try and understand with some examples. Later. But to give you a very simple example, uh, let us say that a uh, few of you friends are staying somewhere together and uh, you are proceeding to your uh, work every day. In a carpooling system, probably one or two have and you all get into that car and you go every day to your work. Now, one fine day there is an accident by which there is some damage to the vehicle. Now, we can take an example that the driver, uh, vehicle was driven by the owner of the car itself. 
and all of you friends were just passengers sitting next to you. Now, legally speaking, there is no need for you to take part or share the damages incurred because the car is somebody else's and he is the one who is driving the car. But when we talk about it in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, sharing someone's burden, that that is what is general average all about. That yes, uh, he has suffered a damage. It is his car. He has driven it. Whether it is mistake or no, that's secondary. But damage is there, and it's it's a big damage. And since you people all have been going together with him for a long time, you you take it as an opportunity to uh, I mean say something like a gratitude that you are trying to help him out by sharing some of his burden. Legally, you are not required, but because to show your gratitude, yes, that you have all been utilizing his uh, uh, services for this long, uh, going with him, bonding together and going. So for that reason, you try to share. This is what is a simple example of uh, general average. Now, historical background. That's very interesting. The first time this general average law was codified. That means it was written down. And remember, if it has been written down somewhere, it should have been practiced or in existence much, much, much earlier. So the first time when it was actually written down was in the Lex Rodia or the Rhodes Maritime Code, which was in 800 BC. You can roughly estimate it's about 3000 years ago. It was first actually written down. But the sad part is this entire Lex Rodia has been lost in history. They were not able to get it. But there were a number of references throughout history to this Lex Rodia. That means people have had access to it and they were able to uh, get all these laws. Uh, among uh, general average is one part of this uh, Rodian uh, law, Rodian Maritime Code. Uh, one more reference, the one which we have is in the 13th century Rolls of Oleron. Which, which is a, probably, yes, you can say a, a French codification of uh, law. And uh, there were some judgments based on uh, this uh, Rolls of Oleron. So there also there is some reference in the 13th century itself. So you can see that this, this has been a practice in maritime history for long, long time. That's one of the reasons why I was very, very fascinated by this rule, by this general average. Whereas the first modern codification was in the year 1890 <clears throat> and that was through York and Club rules. The first codification, I, I need to add the word that modern history, that it is done by York and Club rules. And this York and Club rules is the one which we follow for uh, any cases related to uh, general average even now even now what has started in 1890 continues now this york antwerp rules was first codified and brought together by this organization called cmi committee maritime international which is the oldest organization in the world that exclusively concerned with the unification of maritime law and related commercial practices. This is a very, very, very important organization for uh, seafarers like us for settlement of various uh, disputes. They have been uh, in existence for a very, very long time. Probably during that time itself, they were uh, uh, brought in. I mean, they, uh, uh, this organization came together uh, in the 1980s sorry 1890s is the oldest organization in the world that is exclusively concerned with unification of maritime law and related commercial practices so since we have touched upon this cmi i just want to give you a little bit more idea about this cmi now cmi ha has an executive council comprising officers and counselors from around the world 
people who have uh, a lot of exposure into maritime law they are its members its members are from 56 national maritime law associations and most of them are uh, obviously traditional maritime nations so from there they have maximum members and the uh, relationship with IMO started in the year 1967 after the Torrey Canyon of course at that time probably all of you remember that it was IMCO right at that time which later became IMO so the cooperation of CMI started with IMO in the year 1967 after the Torrey Canyon incident leading to the CLC 1969 this was the first time CMI and IMO cooperated and later they continued this cooperation for uh, uh, till date they continue this cooperation after that Athens convention 1974 LLMC 1976 salvage 1989 very very important all of these they have all been done with cooperation of uh, between IMO and CMI so CMI has uh, contributed a lot uh, towards these right. now let's come back to general average after drifting a little bit about uh, CMI now back to general average now a general average situation arises when there is an extraordinary sacrifice earlier we saw a very gen generic description but this this is a very important definition each word of this carries a lot of weightage when there is an extraordinary sacrifice it's not just sacrifice extraordinary sacrifice or expenditure resulting from an intentional act that means any damage which has happened without intent cannot be treated as central average intentional act which is reasonably made or incurred for common safety of the ship cargo and freight in situations of peril for the safety of maritime adventure now um, remember maritime adventure is a word which is used in the insurance industry so the, still the word still continues now think of what we had talked about in uh, particular average uh, examples and now look at these general average examples beaching the vessel in order to prevent a total loss by sinking okay now uh, when we talked about uh, damage due to grounding uh, that that was not an intentional one whereas this is an intentional one this is one example flooding intentional flooding of engine room for, for firefighting operations in the engine room where <coughs> probably you have uh, come to a conclusion that whatever uh, uh, methods you have been following is not going to yield any results so you thought of intentional flooding now oh, okay uh, this is a uh, very very tough decision to take yes you have taken and because of that you have caused a lot of damage to your vessel engines other uh, uh, items in the engine room so this can be treated as general average now after grounding when you use the ship's engines to refloat your vessel that means the action taken and the resultant damage to your engine if it is before grounding that means you are trying to prevent grounding that is never considered extraordinary because that is expected out of the master to be able to use all available means to prevent grounding but after grounding when you are trying to retrieve the ship from that situation that can be considered as general average Furthermore, vessel with cargo is disabled due to main engine failure which cannot be repaired. Then the engagement of tug to tow the vessel to a port of refuge 
is an extraordinary expenditure to the extent that are no that there are no savings in fuels and other costs now here it's very important now generally when you do any sacrifice there has to be some danger to the vessel that's why you are making some sacrifice now just look at this a vessel which is having a complete engine breakdown engine failure which cannot be repaired <clears throat> it is out in the middle of the sea probably 1000 meters miles from the coast in under that circumstance also if you engage a tug it is still considered as general average because since there is no way that you are uh, going to get your engine sweep uh, repaired by yourself and at some point of time the vessel is going to run into danger so keeping that in mind so even if you engage a tug uh, right in the middle of the sea for taking you to a port of refuge yes that is allowed as a general average the extraordinary expenditure of entering the port of refuge that it provided that of course it was not a planned port of call or port of destination that also comes under general average it means if you are diverting to a port of refuge that comes under general average right some essential aspects of general average there are more than one interest in maritime adventure that means multiple parties should be there because if there is one party there is no question of sharing is it not so there should be more than one uh, interest the sacrifice and or expenditure made should be intentional now one more example which i can think of is that if you have some cargo on fire when you fight the fire and in the process the damage which has occurred to the cargo due to the fire that can be considered as a particular average only but to ensure that the fire is doesn't spread you intentionally wet some other good cargo which are which as of now is not on fire such cargo also you wet it to make sure that the fire doesn't spread beyond a point that damage which is caused to the cargo which has been wetted intentionally that is treated as general damage so here the uh, most important thing to remember intentional the sacrifice and or expenditure should be made reasonable reasonably that means for uh, another example that when your ship is uh, due to heavy weather damage or something ship has listed very badly you are uh, now deciding to uh, uh, jettison some containers so that time you should plan on jettisoning the required number of the prob- possible required number of containers only should be jettisoned for the purpose of saving the vessel so if it is done unnecessarily that cannot be counted that that comes under particular average the sacrifice and or expenditure should be made in a situation of peril which threatens the common adventure that is all the interest but remember the example i gave you the peril need not be immediate where uh, the engine failure and the ship is in mid sea also is can be coming under general average the sacrifice and or expenditure should be made for the common safety which means everybody all parties should have benefited out of it now coming back to your tank for rules so these your tank for rules as i said from 1899 it was first codified and then it had undergone lot of uh, changes also so what we follow now is the 2016 one earlier there was uh, a change which had uh, amendment happened in 94 then 
and the latest one which you are going to see is 2016 again i am not going to go very deep into these york and purple because this is just an introduction to general average now remember whatever definitions we have seen so far about general average have all been set right and uh, uh, clarified with the uh, york and purple rules only what are york and purple rules are a set of internationally recognized rules drawn up by a number of maritime countries to enable the assessment of each party's general average contribution following an incident in which a general average was have not agreed to apply the york and purple rules common law will apply now this is something which causes a lot of confusion because each countries may have their own uh, version of uh, the general average act so each one will be confused as to how it can be sorted out so to avoid this the york and purple rules have been uh, most favored by shippers ship owners etc for incorporating into the charter part <clears throat> so if both parties have not agreed to apply the york and purple rules common law usually that of the country where the voyage is terminated following the general average act may be applied to the general average adjustment so this this is something which uh, you really are not sure what what is finally going to be followed so to have better clarity people prefer this york and purple there is a risk in such cases of wide variations from one country to another in the method of adjustment of general average because each country uh, may have their own uh, way of uh, applying this uh, average adjustment now these york and purple rules uh, i am talking about the uh, latest 2016 amended version consists of seven lettered rules of course uh, it's all in capital letters alpha to gol seven lettered rules stating the general principles of general average how to apply how to interpret uh, how to uh, calculate so general principles are what is there in the lettered rules plus 23 numbered rules Roman number one to twenty-three, dealing with specific aspects of uh, clarifying the requirements of uh, applying these general average principles and how to settle it. Now, this is where that uh, the earlier basic definition, which I said, this this has been clarified uh, in greater depth here. this is the first letter rule rule paramount which we call there is a general average act when and only when an extraordinary sacrifice or expenditure is intentionally and reasonably made or incurred for the purpose of common for the common safety for the purpose of preserving from peril the property involved in a common maritime adventure this is the definition in as per york and purple rules alpha letter uh, rule alpha now uh, fine i think uh, i have not gone into details of these york and purple rules again as i said this was just 
to kindle your interest in these general average uh, you you can go through the net and you'll find so much about the history of general average very very interesting for you to go through and uh, uh, try and see uh, you uh, you'll get automatically uh, engrossed with the, how it has been applied for 3000 years so it's a very very interesting uh, aspect of law right that was the whole purpose uh, not to take you too much into the technical aspects of the law but to just to give you an introduction to this general language right fine so please uh, share your feedback it's very important for us to improve so please send your uh, feedback to efeedback@hmtmarine.com so that uh, in case you want uh, some other additional topics which you want us to do or in case you want us to improve in a way which can be suggested we will definitely go through that so that's it from my end thank you very much for watching this have a great day